Hey guys, in my last video I showed you how I used an Arduino to get this stepper motor going a whopping 22.5 revolutions per second, which turns out to be a whopping 1350 revolutions per minute, which is pretty fast for a stepper motor this size. Now while the last video was focused purely on speed, that really isn't a practical application for a high torque stepper motor like this one. What is going to be important, however, is smooth and constant acceleration. Once again for this video, we're using the DM542 micro step driver, an Arduino Nano, and a 36 volt power supply. In the last video, I used a very simple but crude method for accelerating the stepper motors. And the reason I did this is that at very high speeds, sometimes the computation time from the Arduino can actually slow down the stepper motor. So we needed to keep it very simple. But in doing that, we didn't have constant acceleration. So in the last video, we stuck with the addition and subtraction of integers. In this video, however, we're going to use floats and we're going to use division. All right, so once again, we're going to start off with 1600 pulses per revolution on our microcontroller. We're going to use digital out pin 2 as our enable pin, number 3 as our direction, and 4 as our pulse. We're going to start out by pulsing 66 pulses per second, which will give us about 0 0.04 revolutions per second, or 2.4 RPM, which is pretty slow. And we're going to accelerate to 5,000 pulses per second, which will give us about 3.125 revolutions per second, or 187 RPM. Our acceleration rate, I've chosen 800 because it's a nice, easy number to calculate. That will give us about 0.5 revolutions per second squared acceleration, which means every second the speed will increase by half in RPS. And that's calculated simply by taking your acceleration rate and dividing it by your number of steps. Got a Boolean for direction, integers for step and mode, which we'll explain a little bit later. And of course, our wait time integer will be the time that delay in between steps. Here in the setup, we have our four output pins. I've included the onboard LED because we're going to use that to tell us when the stepper motor has reached full speed. We're going to initialize those, and that's all for the setup. All right, here in the main loop, I've used a case structure for the different scenarios. The first case, the zero, is for acceleration. And we're going to exit this case if the steps per second ever exceed or equal the maximum allowed steps per second. We're also going to turn our LED on at that point, indicating that we've hit the high full speed. Now down here in line 37 and 38 is where the magic starts to happen. We calculate our wait time by taking 1 million and dividing it by steps per second. This will give us our time delay in between pulses. And now line 38 is where we accelerate for the next round. So our new steps per second are going to be our old steps per second plus our acceleration rate times one over our current steps per second. Now, once we reach full speed, we will enter case one in our structure. And case one is simply going to spin the motor 10 times at maximum speed, uh, or 16,000 pulses. And once we complete those 10 rotations, we're going to turn off the onboard LED. After that, we are going to decelerate our motor. And this looks very similar to the acceleration routine, except the plus before is now a minus. Now, after we've decelerated back to the minimum speed, we move on to case three. Case three actually turns off the motor with this enable high command. We wait five seconds and then switch the direction of the motor and re enable the motor. And we go back to case zero, which starts the process all over again, going the opposite direction. Outside of the case structure, of course, we have our pulsing of the stepper motor. We pulse it high, we wait for the prescribed wait time, pulse low again, and we have this delay microseconds, just to allow the voltage in the line some time to drop. Let's plug it in and see if it works. Looks like it is accelerating quite smoothly. 
Now we're at top speed. And now decelerating. All right, and I disabled the motor for a few seconds, and it should go the other direction now. Very happy, looks like it's working great. Now the last video getting maximum speed out of our stepper motor was a lot of fun, but this video probably is more practical to real life applications. I hope you find it useful and I look forward to seeing you again next time. As always, thanks for watching.